and we are live at five past five. Sorry about that. Bit of a um, new fabric in the washing machine situation. So that's why I'm a little bit late. And then I had to go and get myself a cup of tea and all the good things. But I'm here. Um, so hi. So what are we going to talk about this week? Well, I've kind of moved location today. Um, I might not stay here. I haven't quite decided. Um, but I have lots of things I want to talk to you about today. I'm just going to have a little slurp of my tea and then we're going to get stuck in. So, you might have seen on my reels, I think it was, or possibly stories, about boxes. So, it is um, box delivery time again. So, it is that time of the month where the boxes are going out to all the members. Hi, Julie! Um, and I thought I would show you what's in the boxes. Hello, Ashley. How did you get on, Ashley? Did you get home okay? And I'm really sorry that we never met. It was just one of those. Maybe we need to do it not via Facebook because maybe that was the issue. But definitely next time you're over, we'll be more organised and definitely meet up for a cup of tea. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm going to show you what's in the box today. And then you can have a little think about what it is that we might be making and or what skill we might be learning this month. And then I'm going to talk to you about what I'm going to be making. Um, it's nearly the end of July. I mean, how did that happen? That's just crazy. And I'm chipping away at my cross, well, cross stitch I've not done much on at all for a week. But the quilt is coming along nicely and I'm trying to rein it in. However... Tomorrow is social Saturday, so for that's a fairly new thing on the calendar. Once a month, I'm trying to do a kind of social Saturday down the church hall, 9 o'clock to half past 12, 15 pounds, and you can bring whatever you want to sew or knit or whatever. It's up to you. It's kind of geared at sewing because crafting tea is not about sewing machines. So this is really geared more at people for doing sewing, although not everybody does sew that comes. Um, but that was kind of like my target audience, if you like. Um, but yeah, so that's tomorrow. So afternoon tea is not on tomorrow. However, so show Saturday is on tomorrow. So I needed a project to take with me. And if you watched the sewing bee, I forgot to mention it last week. But last week they made um, trench coats and I quite fan fancied making a trench coat. So I went to Ramsey today because the trench coat material that they use is called gabardine and that was what I made my shorts out of and I knew they had different colours so I thought right I'm going to go back and I'm going to get some of that so I've got some red gabardine to make this coat which is currently in the washing machine which is why it was late. So this is the coat pattern. Now I know it's not a trench coat but it's similar. Um, and my plan was I was going to make this one in wool. Um, but then when I read it and it said you can do wool or gabardine, I thought, well, actually, I'll do a lightweight one with the high collar and the gabardine. And that's quite close to a trench coat. So went today, bought the red fabric, which is in, should be hopefully on the line now, fingers crossed. Some lining. I was looking for some really jazzy lining, but I've just ended up with navy. Um, jazzy lining seems to be quite a tricky thing to get a hold of. Anyway, that's beside the point. So I'm not going to be starting that tomorrow because I still need to trace all the pattern pieces and everything. But what I am going to start tomorrow when I'm down the church is, cast your mind back a while ago now, I made this denim dress as part of sewing bees challenge a couple of could have been last year or the year before and i tried to do it under sewing bee conditions which didn't happen took me nine and a half hours to make it i actually wrote on it how long it took and i think they were given like five hours or something um and then a while ago this was the fabric that i had bought to go with to make another one. Oh, i can't get it anyway so this is it inside out so this is what i'm going to make this dress out of but I don't know if you remember me saying I had made the first version, I'd made too tight across the shoulders. So when, when you go like this, it stretched this seam here and you can actually see where it's pulled the fabric. 
so I need to make it bigger. So my pattern pieces are cut out and my, my thing that I put on Facebook a while ago was, will it actually fit on the fabric? Because I hadn't bought the amount of fabric that it said to buy, I'd bought less. And we worked out it was going to fit. So my plan tomorrow is I'm going to take this down to the church tomorrow and I'm going to get all my pattern pieces cut out. I'm not sure I'll get any sewing done. And my new Bernina sewing machine is quite heavy. I'm not sure that I really want to take it to the church. So that's to be confirmed. We'll wait and see what happens. I could take a couple of things and cut out a couple of things rather than um, try and get any sewing done, but we'll see what happens. I've also got an empty house tomorrow afternoon. So that means that potentially I could spend the afternoon sewing. So who knows what might happen. But anyway, so yeah, so that's my plan for tomorrow. There is still space on social Saturday. So if you want to come along, um, you can book your slot via my website. Or if you want, you can just turn up and pay on the day. It's up to you. But anyway, what the moment you have all been waiting for. This month's box. So what is going to be in this month's box? Well, let's see. And this is actually somebody's box. So... Um, if this is your box and you've not picked it up yet, I will repackage it for you. Um, but maybe don't watch Tea with Fee or you might get the surprise spoiled. So let me just remove the tape. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. I put this from the back. Let's see. Can you see? Right. Dun, dun, dun. I've not got all the tape unpicked. Right. Okay, so this is what's in this this month's box. Uh, you don't know what that you don't know what we're making. So this is one of the packages. I'll try and open it nicely. Normally I'm a kind of, mm, I'm a, are you a rip it open kind of person? Or are you a open it carefully kind of person? I think it depends what it is. Okay, let's see what's in here. Okay. So. I'm looking at this as if I don't know what's in it. But I did pack them. Right, we've got a packet of universal needles. So. The needles can sometimes be a clue as to what we're making because sometimes we've got quilting needles in there. Sometimes we've got jeans needles. Um, sometimes there's a stretch needle. So these are universal. So these are bog standard needles. Um, we have also got... I lost my hair bobble. <laughs> we've also got standard issue bobbin handmade with love button i'm still thinking about getting make it so buttons but i've kind of halted on that for now a real thread and my go-to thread is normally so guterman's so easy no so it all so it all two seconds mm -hmm. Oh, that didn't help. So, this is like a box of thread or like a, a folder of threads. I love this. I, I definitely recommend these because it's got loads of colours in it. Four to eight colours I think you get in it. And it's actually really good value for money because I think now it's at least £2.50 for one of these. Oh, I don't have a calculator. Two, see, it's £2.50 and you get four to eight in this. Right, so that's over a hundred pounds, isn't it? Isn't it? Somebody else can prove me right or wrong. But to buy that as a kit, I think you can get it for about 50 pounds. So you're getting the basically double for your money kind of thing. Anyway, I thought it told me on it the range, but I'm pretty sure it's so all thread. It's poly cotton. I tend to go poly cotton rather than cotton. Um polyester, sorry, polyester rather than cotton. And they also do a recycled one. And I think I'm going to go down the recycled route because I have used it and it's just as nice. 
also they're color coded as well I, I know i'm going off on a tangent it's not new um but i feel like this is today's top tip so these are color coded depending on what actual type of thread it is so this is standard so all polyester thread i'll be back mm -hmm. the state of the table okay so this is your sew all polyester thread okay now you've also got this one so if you look at the difference in the color this is like a light creamy yellow and this one's an orangier cream this is 100% cotton this one is sew all and this is the one that I would go for then you also get a green one. The green one is top thread, top stitch thread. So it's quite a lot thicker. You need to use a top stitch needle for this because the thread's so thick. I mean, you can see the difference in thickness there. Hang on. Because it's so thick, you need an actual top thread needle and they've normally like 100 or 120 needle size, which gives a bigger eye hole to get the thread through, but I don't know if you can see that from there. There's a significant difference between the top stitch here and the cotton. And then the actual poly cotton again is slightly thinner as well. So it's important that you use the right thread for the project. Um, and this top stitch thread, you tend to use, it's quite similar weight to denim. I have denim as well, but I'm not. It's not handy. Right, let's see what else we've got in here. Right, and then again, you go for this one. So that is a grey top one, and this is embroidery thread for the machine. So again, you get embroidery needles, and they've got a sharper point. And where you put the thread through, the hole you put the thread through, and the shaft at the back of the needles designed differently. Because this is really shiny and thin, it can sometimes catch or if you've got the wrong needle in. So an embroidered needle will stop that from happening. Sometimes if you see when you're sewing, you get like a build up of fluff near the hole, the eye of the needle. And that's because it's the wrong needle for the thread that you're using. So I thought I would just share that just now. I don't think I've got any other ones in there at the minute. But that's a little bit of a crash course on different threads but my go-to is Guterman. I think they are the best personally they're the ones that I would use um, and the other thing I'd say to you is it's, it's not cheap to go and buy fabric if you're going to go to the effort time and effort to make yourself an item of clothing or something nice for the house don't scrimp on your thread because it won't do you any favours. And if you're also, if you're a fairly new sewer, there's a chance you might blame yourself for it not working because you're new and you might just go, oh, it's me, I don't know what I'm doing. But actually it could just be literally that you're using the wrong thing. Um, and it's that that's causing the problem. It's not you using the machine wrong. So that's just a little top tip. So yeah, so the thread is some thread some bias binding Ooh. so let's recap needles schmitz needles i definitely go schmitz needles mainly they're really good but the other reason is because they're color coded if you look at the other needles genome and organ needles they don't have any colour coding in them. And it's unless you're like super disciplined, you're not going to know what needle it is that's in. You can use a magnifying glass and it is printed onto the shaft of the needle, the size, but it doesn't tell you whether it's a universal, a ballpoint, a stretch, or all those kind of things. Um, so they are, um, this just takes the guesswork out of it for you. And if you've not put them back somewhere, that you know what it is and it's just lying loose somewhere you can work out what it is so yes schmitz needles so we've got universal needles so we don't have fancy needles 
and we've got the bobbin and we've got the button and we've got the thread and we've got the bias binding and we've got this cord what could that be used for and an everyday tea bag and the tea bag was in because my purpose reason for making the boxes in the first place was to give people an opportunity to actually just carve some time out in the week or the month to do something for themselves and if that thing was sewing I, I can help by sending you the whole kit to your house you don't have to spend the time going to decide what it is you want to make and going and buying all the stuff to make it although to be honest that is quite a nice thing if that's you know sometimes it's quite nice to just go and have a mooch around the shop fabric shop or wool shop they're like my favorite shops to go to um but if you're struggling for time then this can be a great way to tick that self-care craft box um craft self-care and crafty um side of you without the added time needed to get yourself to the shop anyway so that's what's in here let's see what's in here now elaine's watching possibly not now but she has been watching so she's got one so i'm hoping that she's already opened hers and i'm not spoiling the surprise um otherwise go and get a cup of tea elaine and come back um when i'm finished right let's see what's in here it's very exciting okay so we have got interfacing okay and the other thing that is useful to know about the boxes is you get at least you you get always nearly always get a lot more fabric than you actually need for the project okay so i try to ensure that you've got at least a meter of fabric preferably half a meter of each or a combination it's very rare um it's very rare that i would give you one fabric on its own unless it was a panel or something oh good i'm glad you've opened yours elaine right so this is some um, interfacing and this is called decaville this interfacing so it's quite a stiff interfacing uh, and it's iron on and there's a long quarter here so a long quarter is a quarter of a meter this way and this and then it's cut the width of the fabric which is how it comes off the roll a fat quarter would be half a meter as you cut it off the roll and then you fold it in half and then cut it down the middle so you're getting half of a half meter so imagine that this is my half meter and then this is one fat quarter and this is the other fat quarter that's how it works and with a long quarter you've just got one continuous long bit but it's long and narrow so you've got a, a long quarter of decaville love this stuff You've got half a metre of this really nice Bumbleberry Lewis and Irene fabric. And it's kind of like a petrol bluey colour. It's really nice. And then you are going to love this one. How nice is that? Half a metre of this Lewis and Irene fabric. So it's always really good quality fabric that you get in the boxes. Tends to be Lewis and Irene or Tilda. Both of which I love the range. Um... I'm all over these top tips today, by the way. So this range is called Spring Flowers. And this quick top tip is if you're a bit if you're a bit unsure about colours and what goes with what, quite often the fabric actually can help you. So on the cell veg, which is this bit here, it tells you the range of the fabric. So this is called spring flowers and then it's got a code so if you wanted to buy more of it this is the code that you would use and then these are all the colors that are in this fabric that in theory if you went to a fabric shop if you're buying this from a fabric shop you could just pull this out and go next to all the plain colors in the fabric shop and then these are the colors that would be the best match for this fabric which is a really useful tool when you're just starting and you're a little bit overwhelmed with all the stuff in the shop so you've got half a metre of this. How nice is that? 
And if anybody wants to order a box retrospectively, which is fine, you can do, I just point out that I've none of this fabric left, so it won't be this fabric in the box. But for everybody that has already pre-ordered the box, this is what you know, that's this is the fabric that's in the box. So with that in mind, I wonder what we're going to be making. So we have got these two fabrics. These two fabrics, some interfacing. Ooh, and I forgot this, look, webbing. What is the webbing gonna add to the mix? I love this bit. I love it. I'm wondering if everybody's just scratching their heads just now thinking about what it is that they're gonna be making. So that is what's in the box this month. If you get my monthly newsletter, there will be a link to this in the newsletter, so you might see it again, just doing the whole unboxing thing and letting you see what's in it. Um, if you don't get the newsletter and you would like the newsletter, then sign up on the website for the newsletter, and what normally goes in there is what was in the box last month, this month's unboxing video, a link to last month's pattern, and a link to the blog for the month and whatever it is that I'm chatting about. And this month, I'm actually going to be chatting about on the blog, which will be out around about the first of the month, is hems. How to hem something. Um, and all the different versions that are to hem things. And I'm hoping that there will be a little video to go along with that, with me actually doing the hemming, um, which hopefully will help. So that's what this month's blog's about. So if you want to get that information direct to your inbox, then sign up to my newsletter and you will get it that way. Now, now that I have shared with you what's in the box, what's on my to-do list for tomorrow, this here, uh, let me see. This, this box here is the sewing projects in progress. So I did a, a reel the other day and it was just my kind of hand sewing, knitting, crochet projects that were in that. And I was like, sit, I don't know if you've seen it, and I was sitting sort of saying, yeah. So I'm not really getting much done here. And the length of time it took me to do the reel, I could have finished one. Well, that didn't include the box of actual machine sewing projects. So there are quite a few projects in the making. And I've just gone and bought the fabric to make this, which is, as I say, hanging up now. But another news. It's been a really busy week in the shed. So we had on Tuesday... Lesson number one of the week. Didn't go to Joyce's on Monday. Had sewing on Tuesday, which is Christine, Kaz and Laura. Kaz and Laura are both making the um, quilt as you go basket. So that was out of one of the boxes. And when I'm doing the box, I try to have a different new scale in each box. So you're learning something new each time. So Quilt As You Go was a couple of months ago and they're making these little baskets. Christine's on the graduation bag um, and she's she's at sewing the zips in part of that. So that was going really well. Went to Joyce's on Wednesday and actually did my first sewing lesson with Joyce's great granddaughter who's called Ava and she's 11. And we are making um, cushions, Christmas cushions we're making and she's going to be doing that throughout the summer so that's going to be fabulous, getting somebody new um, hooked on sewing so I'm really enjoying that so far and then that takes us to Thursday which was yesterday and as you know Thursday is like my super busy day so we had in the morning Alwyn, Chris, no, Alwyn, Nikki and Charlotte Charlotte's pinafore dress is so nearly finished she literally just has to hem it and it looks amazing. I'm hoping that she's going to wear it next week. Um, although she did say that she won't be hemming it till she's here. So she might be wearing it when she leaves. Um, so she's working on that and it looks fabulous. And one of the reasons I want to share it with you is the fabric is amazing. It's like a cord, but it's got a pattern. <coughs> and it's so nice. Nikki was finishing a Manx Log Cabin cushion. And Harry Potter fabric. There's a bit of a Harry Potter theme going on with Nikki at the minute. 
and she also finished the Tilda um, makeup bag, which is a free pattern and comes in three different sizes and I love it and I use it all the time. Um, so I definitely recommend that and I'll put that in the, 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 the details. Um, so that was Thursday morning. Good afternoon team, Thursday afternoon and I made quite good progress on the quilt. So it's like definitely past the halfway point of hand quilting. So I'm delighted with that. Um, and then Wednesday, no, Thursday afternoon, evening, we had Lynn and Fran, because Wendy's on holiday. Lynn is making these gorgeous um, pyjamas for her grandchildren. And they're in this Lewis and Irene brushed cotton. And it's like a kind of forest scene with li little animals. And it's so cute. And it feels so soft and just snuggly. Um, and that's actually, she got that from Jones and Onkin. So if you fancy some flannel pyjamas, go and get some from Jones and Onkin. Um, if you're one of the members of the online sewing group, then you get a 10% off discount at Jones as well as Ramsey Craft Centre, um, New Generation in Port Erin, <coughs> and also of getting your sewing machine repaired, which is recommended you should get that done at least every 18 months. Um, so they're all included as, as part of the membership, which is amazing. And I'm very thankful to everybody that has offered up those discounts. And a lot of people have been benefiting from them. So, um, so again, yeah, this flannelette stuff is gorgeous. Um, Lewis and Irene, as I say, it tends to be what I use or Tilda. Um, so I definitely rate them. I, I would definitely say to you, if you are making anything that's clothing, make sure you wash it because the things shrink. So better to shrink before you actually cut it out and have spent all the time and effort making it and then it doesn't fit because it's shrunk. And this flannel shrunk significantly. So much that... Um, I think it started off 44 inches wide and ended up 40. So that's quite a big difference. And it was only because we had, we were making quite a few pairs that Lynn was able to fit them all onto the fabric because the way that the actual instructions for the pattern told you to lay it out, it wouldn't fit because the fabric had, wasn't wide enough because it had shrunk. So that's just something to be careful of. Um, and then this morning we had... Did that cover everybody? Yes, Christine. No, Alwyn. Alwyn's making a table runner, Christmas table runner, which is my standard pattern. And it was quite funny actually, because she was taking it some homework and she's having problems with the printer. So she asked if she could borrow my paper copy, which was, I said yes to. And I don't normally say, I don't normally let people borrow the, the copy because it's like my master copy and I didn't have another one. Anyway, I totally forgot that that night that Fran was making the same thing. She was making the table runner and I didn't have the pattern. So I went to find the pattern online. It's a free pattern. Went to find it, found it. And basically it said link not found because I've been using it for years. So luckily I've made it that many times that at least I could work out how big the pieces needed to be and how many we needed and get the, it started without the actual instructions. But I mean, what are the chances? Typical. Anyway, so Alwyn was working on that and um, the swear jar was overflowing by the end of Thursday morning because there was quite a lot of unpicking required. Then Thursday afternoon, as I say, evening, Lynn's working on these um, gorgeous little flannelette pyjamas and Fran's working on the table runner. So again, we've got a bit of a Christmas theme going on. And then this morning I had Christine, a different Christine, and a new lady called Vicky. And it was a fabulous morning this morning. So Christine is working on these really nice bags that she's making. It was a pattern that came in a sewing magazine. I don't know which magazine, but I will find out because I think I'm going to have a go at making them because they look really good. And Vicky came for her first lesson. She has never used a sewing machine before. Sean very kindly had lined up four different versions of sewing machines, different ranges of price. They're all second hand um, <coughs> for her to have a go at. So she's found one that she quite likes and she's going to have another go at that next week and then potentially she'll buy that one. Um, so again, if you're interested in sewing lessons and you don't have a machine, don't let that put you off. Just get in touch with me because I can organise for some trial machines for you. Um, 
So she had a brilliant morning. I hope she had a brilliant morning. She went home with a finished item, which is the book bag. Um, and she is coming back next Thursday to make her second project. So she said that regardless, she was going on a hen do tonight. She said that she wasn't sure what she was going to use it for, but she was going to find a way to use this bag tonight, which I thought was lovely. Um, and you can just tell when things are going to work well, when people just get on and you feel like you've known somebody for a long time already. And that's how it felt today. And it can be quite daunting to come and join a group that's already established. But Vicky fitted in really well with myself and Christine, who were all, who are obviously um, there all the time because I live here. Um, so yeah, so it worked out lovely. And the reason that I do, I'm trying to collate all the stuff that's in the So Like a Pro program so that I can show you them all. Um, just for anybody that might be interested that's not already taken me up on taking some lessons, all the things that we make. But the reason we do the book bag as our first project is because on day one of your first lesson I provide everybody with a welcome pack because I love stationery so in case you didn't know that already apart from the fact that I love anything to do with crafting I actually really love stationery as well so I'm just going to give you a quick tour of what you get in the welcome pack so the note the book bag is made to put the welcome pack in that's the plan so you get one of these plastic a4 folders and i ran out right you get a nice hardback a5 lined notebook you get a nice pen because and I've, if, if it goes to plan I tried to match the pen to the plastic wallet because who doesn't like matchy matchy? So you get a nice new pen and I'd run out of these. So Vicky, if you're watching, your pen will be here for you for next week. And then within the welcome pack, you get, um, I'll show you. Hold on. Da -da -da. Here's one we made earlier. And the um, book cover is actually in one of the boxes. So this is what you, what I give you a print out of. This is um, a startup supplies list. So if you're brand new to sewing, this is the sort of top list of things I would recommend that you buy. And then on this page, it's the skills that we're going to learn as we work through the Sew Like a Pro program. So things like bias binding, box corners, buttonholes, Inserting a zip, how to wind a bobbin, um, sewing through layers, sewing through interfacing, those kind of things. And then we've also got a list of all the projects that we're going to make and you just write in when you've completed them and it gives you an idea of what we're doing in what order. And then you get each, each new project comes with its own instructions and they're in a format that can be stuck into the book. And as you can see here, this is well used. Um, but the point of the book and the instructions is you need to write your own notes in order for it to make sense to you. I encourage you to write notes and make it make sense to you and draw diagrams and like sticky notes. And so I was saying to um, Vicky today, for example, we were talking about scissors. And you'd think you just scissors are scissors but they're not scissors are not just scissors you've got embroidery scissors you've got fabric scissors you've got paper scissors you've got um duck build scissors you know it's not just a case of right i need to write on my list of things to buy i need to buy a pair of scissors you get um the easy grip um spring loaded scissors so we were trying out all those kind of things today and then we started talking about um dressmaking pins and who knew there were so many versions of those so there's like this huge minefield of all these different products that you can buy and you can quite easily buy the wrong thing or things that you're not going to use. So this is where the sort of like starter pack thing just gives you like these are the entry level things that you would need and then you can just take it from there. So I just thought because I had received that little kind of um, order it would be worth showing you what you get in the welcome pack and 
what happens on day one. So you get this nice stationary pack, cup of tea or whatever it is that you're drinking. And in theory, by the end of your first lesson, which is two hours long, you will have a finished item to take home with you. Um, and that included quite a lot of talking about how to cut the fabric and looking at four different sewing machines and deciding which one to use. So there was quite, you know, there was quite a lot fitted into the two hours. And I think Vicky went home having learned a lot and probably not realising there was so much involved. So that has been this week. I then had a trip to Ramsey this afternoon after the sewing lesson to buy my fabric. And it's takeout night tonight. So I'm super excited because I have got curries and steaks ordered and we are going to pick it up very soon. And I've not had a takeout for ages, so I'm like really looking forward to it. I just need to figure out if I've got enough time from speaking to you to go and pick it up to get the shed tidy because it's not looking particularly happy at the minute. It doesn't help that I've got an extra four sewing machines and an extra overlocker here. So that does take up quite a lot of room. Um, but you know, you can never have too many sewing machines, can you? And I actually have, of my own, three sewing machines, a cover stitch machine, an overlocker, and the embroidery unit. So I already have them in the in the shed normally without adding an extra four sewing machines, another overlocker, and I've just realised that Alwyn leaves her sewing machine here, so that's another sewing machine. <laughs> How many does one person need? And then they'll still not have one to use when I need to use it. But anyway, enough from me. I hope you've enjoyed today's little overview of what's in the box, what I'm working on next, what everybody's been doing during the week, what's in the welcome pack. Welcome to everybody that's new. If you've been thinking about sewing um, and you would like to have a go and you live in Isle of Man, give me a shout and I might have room for you. Although... Um, the lessons are quite full, to be honest. Really, I've maybe only got room for one more person. Or I could start up another session, possibly on a different day. But we'll cross that bridge when it happens. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go and enjoy my takeout. Um, before I go, I've just remembered, we touched briefly on sewing bee because that's why I'm making this jacket, because it was inspired by last week's trench coat. But how good was the final? They, like, dresses that kind of went... Whoosh, whoosh. Amazing! And it's, like, gobsmacked. I mean, I mean, asthma, I'm sorry if you've not watched the final yet. I've not said who's won, to be fair, but asthma's dress, made-to-measure dress, final dress, was fantastic. I loved the colour and the actual design of the first one. And then you just had this kind of like drop the shoulders and then suddenly you've got this other dress inside another dress. But the thing that I just couldn't get my head around, the, apart from the fact that it twirled the way that it did when she did the thing, how did they make them in the time that they had? So going back to my... attempt last year or the year before to make this which was I think the challenge was they had to make a made to measure and it was a button up dress I think that's what it was and I think somebody might have used this on the show and then I tried to replicate it in the time available and it took me nine and a half hours that's just one dress they had to make two dresses and then make one fit inside the other and be able to at the, with the touch of one hand just go and then suddenly you've got another dress on. So my mind is boggled by how they did that. But it was really good. I'm missing it already. But I am feeling a bit inspired to get my um, dress making hat on. So watch this space for some up-to-date makes in the next couple of weeks. She says, fingers crossed, but you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, for all I know, next week I'll end up pulling out the crochet blanket or something. It's... I have all these great ideas and then suddenly something happens and they go out the window. But we will try to stay on track. Um, and I think I'm going to have like an August focus because that worked really well when I had that the other the other month. So I think I'm going to have an August plan. Is anybody else going to have a plan for what they're going to make in August? Right, I'm going to go have a think about what you're going to make in August. It was lovely chatting to you. Julie, Ashley and Elaine, I think you've all been on. Whether you've stayed on for the whole thing, I don't know. But thanks for listening anyway. 
If you've watched on replay, then I really appreciate that. And uh, the fact you got to the end. Thanks. Love ya. Right, and I will see you next week if I don't see you in person. Um, during the week, I will see you on Tea with Phoenix Friday. And don't forget, social Saturdays tomorrow. So if you're at a loose end and you feel like you want to get some sewing done, possibly some Christmas sewing um, out of the house, because it could be a gift, then you'll know where we'll be. Down at the church, 9 o'clock to half past 12, £15. And you can come for all of it or some of it. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I might see you there. But if not, have a fabulous weekend. See you later. Bye.